Hi, Ian Troop. Uh, I'm a fly fishing guide, instructor, and competitive angler. Uh, today I'm going to tie a fly called a peeping caddis. It's one of my go-to patterns for any time you need to fish a, you know, a, a drifting caddis near close to the bottom. So I'll go through tying one of my simple, easy, and effective peeping caddis. Let's do it. All right, so I'm going to tie uh, my version of a peeping caddis. Um, so, so my style, as you all know, is simple flies. Um, flies are not willing uh, to be afraid of losing. Um, so this peeping caddis, uh, you know, if you think about caddis and rivers, grand, you know, where we are, credit, anywhere caddis are found pretty much in all rivers, and fish get really accustomed to seeing them naturally in the drift. So, you know, if you think of something that gets dislodged, dislodged regularly, would be a case caddis. So this is a really simple case caddis, my take on a peeping caddis, and you can see lots of videos on more advanced versions. This is my version. Uh, I like this one on a jig hook, uh, 450 BL, uh, Hannock is my go-to on this. Uh, tend to use heavier beads as a three and a half mil bead. I, you know, I, I do tend to fish a, a cased caddis or a peeping caddis right close to the bottom. This is not one that, uh, not that a fish wouldn't take it up higher, but I tend to think of it as a if fishing two flies, it's gonna be on my point fly or the bottom fly. It's a great fly that you can add weight to. Um, so a lot of flies I like are really thin. This is one I'm not afraid to have a little bit of bulk, but I have found I used to add a lot of lead wrap underneath it. That would be in extreme situations, but if you do find, gee, I need a, a bomb fly or something to really get down, um, this would be a great pattern in your head. Go, okay, I'm going to tie up some peeping caddises with like extra, extra weight. But for where we're fishing around here, three, three and a half usually get you done. I like it in a 14. You can, uh, 16 is fine as well. You can tie it in a 12 as well. I don't tend to go as small with this one. Um, I can do 18s, 20s, but you could if you wanted, probably just be taking it as something else, but the fish, if it works, who cares? Um, so I've got a three and a half mil copper bead. I like copper beads on this one. I also like um, flat black, you'll see me tie, or nickel. My original is a nickel. Um, so you can tie this in a nickel or a copper. Take your pick, but I'm gonna tie it in a copper, but I've got, I would have no trouble using this Hannock um, nickel colored as well, your choice. Nickel's probably my most used, but I, I'll tie a copper today because copper gives you that little bit of a flash. So lock in the bead. You don't have to invert it. You've seen me do other videos. It just locks right in on a jig hook. Pretty easy. And again, we're gonna go right to the bend of the hook. We're gonna use a kind of the full hook uh, wherever we can. So one thing I found over the years, you could use glow bright floss out the back. People have used chenille. I really like this. This is F and F uh, jelly fritz or whatever they call it, atomic yellow or a greenish color. Um, and so this is a little bit of a tiddly part, but it works really well and so it's worth it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little chunk of that right there and you can see the glow coming off on that. So I was thinking if this is a fly, I think I fish deeper you tend to lose color as you go deeper. That little bit of hot green is something there, you know, that is the peeping caddis. And I think of a lot of our caddis are bright green. Uh, if anything, it gives it a great hot spot. So what I'm doing is I'm just cutting that as close to the, I guess you call the core as possible and keep it pinched in your fingers. I might screw this up, don't worry. Uh, don't feel bad if you do. Uh, what we're gonna try to do is hold it right there and just catch it in and catch in as many as you can. You won't get them all. Keep it pinched and then wrap, 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 wrap. This is not a fly where it is gonna be pretty underneath. And then just keep wrapping it, going okay. Got a pretty good little pinch there. So there is, you can see, our case caddis, and that's more than enough. It is translucent it gives it a little bit of a pop. But I have now created a bit of a bulk there, just even it out. All I'm doing is running the thread to fill in the gap of where I put that big chunk of Fritz, okay, good enough. So we've evened it out. We're gonna come right back to the back. And this is, don't let the simplicity fool, fool you on this one. It is a deadly pattern. And that bright is translucent, but it, boy, does it ever catch the light. So for those who know me, know I like hair is your number one. I like to offset this one with a little bit of call it dark. I think it comes in a dark hair zero or something like that. Or if you've got squirrel dub or something like that, I like to mix it. Um, it's more just to match the bottom. So you can tie these in different colors. You could have a light version. You could have a really dark version. For most of the time, if, you know, if I'm thinking just kind of 
Think of there are going to be stones and stuff that's pulled off the bottom. A case caddis is going to match the bottom. Just, I don't know, I'm blending it to give it a grayish kind of suits almost every situation kind of thing. Um, but you can use any hair's ear dubbing you think matches your condition. So big clump of it here. Um, we're going to go a little heavy on this one. So I'm going to, I'm going to tie it in, dub it tight, but I'm using a little bit more. Again, I'm not going for the ultra thin body here. I'm going for a, a full bodied fly. So keep it in. Don't go crazy, but ram it in there pretty good. It, why, a little trick, if you're coming around, you can always push it down and you can pull there and tighten it. So there's two ways you can do now. So you're, you could just leave it like that. You know, you could take a brush and scruff it out or you can just use your hands is what I started doing. I'm just kind of Gives it, I like it a little bit fuzzy, but not, there we go, just like that. And so I like it a little bit fuzzy, but I not brush the whole thing out. So again, it's got that little bit of a scruffy cased body look. Um, so, and just tie it off. So sometimes I'll make it, you know, again, I could use a little bit of glue there to tie it off. I didn't remember to do the glue, so I'll tie it off there and then I'll do just a double whip finish. Unless my thread is too bunged up on my vise, which it tends to be right now. So we'll just do a half hitch and call it. So there you go. So that is a peeping caddis, deadly fly, simple, simple, simple fly. Again, two bead colors, uh, a copper, but if the go-to, you know, if you had to use one, for me, I like, I keep it pretty bland and you'll use a, a gunmetal or a black. Enjoy.